Day 122. It's our four. It's it's our fourth month on trail today, calendar month. I got the my got my clean farm defeat Damascus Pro Rider socks. That's what they should be called. And then I picked up these sweet Acasa La Sportivas. Not my favorite color, but the price was really right at Round Moose Jaw. Trip. Yeah. Yeah, it's the turp color. I'm from Maryland. <laughs> I love their friction soles. These things already fit really well. Getting rid of the, uh, getting rid of this uh, Topo Ultra Adventure. These have gone a long way for me. I had to do a repair to them, um, but they still have a little bit of tread left. And um, the big repair that I had to do was I had to reseal I had the the upper came apart from the lower and then I had to put it back together and as soon as it starts coming apart you get really bad water intrusion but um kind of a good shoe I told you I'd talk about these in the future and I will just we'll have one last look at them and then they're going in the dumpster so look at the heels yeah the heels are super comfy i noticed that they doubled they are they're super nice super plush you know they fall out yeah but that that just started happening 100 miles ago i got these at mile 970 and what mile are we at today who knows like 1770 1780 1790 so these went 800 miles <laughs> with a repair and that was a big repair i'm not gonna and I did I had to do it to both shoes. So anyway, peace out, Topos. You will not be forgotten. Musalaki Summit on the AT 3.9. This is our first real climb in the White Mountains, even though the last couple days are in the White Mountain National Forest. White Mountains, I don't know what it is. It's not White's Mountains, it's White Mountains. Anyway, we are officially on our climb, and it's a, I think it's a 3,000 foot climb, just a little bit more. I'll, I'll get the numbers for you at the top. But let's see what this thing has to uh, to offer. These, these These are supposed to be some pretty steep interesting mountains lots of rocks and uh we're going to be staying in the shelter on the back side of this thing so we'll see how that goes well it's a hot one today it's supposed to be like 97 98 degrees here in new hampshire a lady one of the townies back in hanover said they only get two hot hot uh, streaks like this a year so this is one of them probably climbed only 800 feet so it's a 3600 foot climb but already temperatures dropped at least five degrees it's probably about 90 down there where we started the uh, Sportivas <sighs> Initial thoughts um, A lot of support My backpack feels lighter because of it even though I'm only carrying two days worth of food Just that support really translates through the structure of the body <sighs> Lots of uh, See how there's short shorts. <laughs> Lots of uh, transmission of uh, power right to the ground. These have smaller lugs on them than uh, that last pair of shoes I had. And there's really like wherever you, wherever your fore, foot is forcing through the ground, these things really, really just push right through. So I feel like I'm using less energy in this climb, even though you can hear me breathing hard. Just got warm again right here. Um, the real test, 
So I don't know if you remember remember back to when I started the trail. I had the uh, Sportiva Bushido, and that's a lighter version of this shoe that I'm wearing now. It's a firm, light trail runner. Has a pretty, I wouldn't say it's got a super high turnover rate to it, but it's got a, the Bushido had a medium to high. And what I mean by that is that you can move really fast in them and you're not putting out a lot of energy between steps to correct your foot placement for maximizing the power into your next step. And this shoe, I actually think, has better, feels like it has better turnover than the Bushido. Um, the Bushido may have had a little bit more wiggle room in the toes, but remember the big complaint I had with the Bushido was that they're so thin and light that I only got about six miles out on them before I started to feel my feet. And then at 12 miles, I was in some pain. And then at 16 miles, I was really hurting. And I was doing that every day for 250 miles. The Solomons, those were a little bit better as far as um, foot, as far as foot, um, <sighs> fatigue, that's the word I was looking for, as far as foot, foot fatigue goes, um, I was getting into about the 11 to 12 range before I'd start feeling my feet, 18, I was pretty uh, unhappy, 21, 22, my feet were screaming at me. This is where the Topo Ultra Adventure wins. They were just kind of a sloppy feeling shoe all the way around. The trade off is time and distance. You can go 20 miles and it felt like you just put them on. That was impressive. You get to camp, and uh, only after I did like 20 to 22 miles would I immediately take them off. But even yesterday, I think we did 19. Those are hard miles yesterday. And I just left them on when I got to camp because they're that comfortable. So the topos are like wearing your favorite bedroom slippers on a cold morning downside of them is that they're construction they hold, they hold together better than I thought they would there's just that one issue that I showed earlier today that let in a lot of water it took me a long time to figure out what it was and uh, man when they were almost brand new shoes my feet were like I'd never seen my feet so pruney luckily I don't blister anymore but Never had such wet feet. It was like I was walking in a creek all day. But I fixed that. I fixed that um, when we were in the town of Pittsfield, um, Massachusetts. And they worked like a champ from there to here. The support um, started to go in the topo at about 180 miles. And I pushed those things to 800. And they really didn't start to the support issues really didn't translate to my body structure until the last maybe 300 miles when I really started to have problems with how flat my feet were getting, but they still had that nice cushioning to them. So kudos to them for that. So that's the question. When does foot, foot fatigue start to push through into the Akasa? And uh, that's gonna be a question for tomorrow because today, I'm only doing about 10 miles on these. <sighs> anyway, you're asking, why is he wearing the cap? It's 100 degrees outside. He's got his hat on, his sunglasses. Vermont is buggy, super buggy. And uh, 
um, you, the, the, even though the biting flies, the black flies as they're called, or the biting flies, they're not really thick. If you take your hat off, three of them will start circling your head almost immediately. And it's like they smell fur and they want to get in on that hair. And they crawl under your shirt and they, man, I had one crawl almost six inches down my shirt yesterday and try to bite me, but I got him. Um, so that's why I got the hat on. That's why I carry a hat is because if you turn the hat around when there's a lot of gnats, they try to, they, for a lot, a lot of time they'll stay out of your eyes. Um, but the hat sunglasses combination keeps bugs off my neck, off the back of my neck, keeps those little eye gnats out of my eyes. And it's hot, but it's cooling down. Just got cool again. So anyway, those are the Sportiva Casas, and uh, we'll see what happens here at the top. It's been a steep for like an hour. Point nine at the summit. You know you're near the top when you see nothing but blue sky. I think we're about 0.6 to the top of that. Look how short these trees are, it's crazy. <laughs> it's totally funny. hot and hazy out today, but it's nice and cool up here. It's like the top of the Wasatch Range. It's crazy.
What's up, Nibbles? We hit mile 1800. We just haven't seen the sign yet. But you know what? I don't know if it matters because we have 392 miles left. And we know that. Look where, look where mile 1800 is. Just big, big views.
Well, that was intense. <laughs> this is our first uh, real set of white mountains. Mount Musalaki, northbound. I mean, it's just like, just everything's just ridiculous. Like, look at this, look at this stream bed. Anyway. <laughs> this has uh, been awesome. Can't wait for more. We're gonna be really entering the rain. Like this, so this is the first mountain. And we're gonna go through a couple little rollers tomorrow for about 18 miles. Um, so I'm interested to see what's in there. There's gonna be a 2,500 foot climb, a thousand foot climb tomorrow. So there's a couple of really decent climbs. And then uh, I think this one today was like 36, yeah, 3,600 feet. Um, from the parking lot, but it, the, the total climb was uh, right at 3,800. We had to do a, a mile walk in that was just a, a light 200 uh, foot uh, elevation gain. But yeah, awesome stuff. Four months in on the AT. Radar and nibbles. We got Smash traveling with us today, as always. He's uh, he has been um, our good traveling buddy. It's called a tram, your tramly, which is your trail family. It's uh, me, Smash, uh, Bunny, and uh, Nibbles, of course. I'm not sure if Bunny's going to get back uh, together with us because he's been out uh, vacationing. So we might be just finishing this thing up with Smash, hopefully. Hopefully we all stay healthy enough to do it. Anyway... That was the Beaver Brook Trail, which is also the AT. And it says this trail is extremely tough. <laughs> and you can read the rest. That was definitely the uh, toughest uh, descent yet that I've had on the AT. Um, ascent, maybe, maybe not on the other side, but just tough nonetheless. So awesome, awesome views too. And uh, going into the whites, wow, they really look, they really look like they're going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm very excited. I, this is, this is the kind of thing that I've just been waiting for, like, my whole life. So, anyway, time to get to camp and finish this day up. <laughs> 